One of my favorite characters in the past few years is Sho Fukang from the show Thunderbolt Fantasy. It's a mix of traditional hand puppetry and added CGI effects whenever appropriate. It's not for everyone because the puppets are very doll-like, and I get that. I've been wanting to cosplay several characters from the show, and I've been carefully collecting fabrics for a few years to make the costumes. This is going to be a mix of Season 1, Season 2, and concept art versions. I'll be using McCall's cosplay OB Gado as a guide, but I won't be showing exactly step by step on how to make this pattern this time. Since it's similar to the kimono pattern I did previously, you can refer to that for more detailed instructions. I'm also splitting the garment into top and bottom pieces with a seam since it will be well hidden with a large belt. This is the video of the outer garment only. First I laid the pattern down and pinned it. This pattern has piece 1 and piece 2 for the front to simulate the traditional kimono and the narrow width of fabrics used to make them. Since I didn't need the seam there, I just pinned them together as if they were one pattern piece. Then I cut it out. These are the front bottom pieces I measured accordingly that needed appliques. I put them down, took off the paper back from the glue, and took my time in placing them where I wanted them to be. I ironed them down so they wouldn't move during sewing them, and satin stitching the edges. Unfortunately, I'm making this during a lockdown, and I ran out of the thread for the satin stitching. Once stores are open again, I'll finish this step. Right sides together, I sewed the back pieces. I did the same with the back bottom pieces. Right sides together, I sewed the front top pieces to the back top pieces. Using the pattern piece as a guide, I marked where the stitches would go with the pin. This particular pattern I found very wide in the shoulders, so I trimmed off a bit of the excess. Once I hemmed around the front, I'm not using a collar pattern piece, I laid down trims that went along the overlapping piece and sewed it down. I used the View B pattern sleeve piece for this part. After finding the top center of the sleeve, I used three different trims to decorate it. and sewed those down. With that, I folded the sleeve in half and sewed it together. Next is the faux fur. For instructions on how to work with it, there's a video link at the top right corner or in the description below. After failing the tear test, I carefully cut the back of the fur to make the cuffs for the sleeve. Here I'm pulling off the loose fur, as it won't get over everything. With right sides together, I sewed the edge of the fur to the end of the sleeve. After that was sewn down with the machine, I went around afterwards and hand sewed the rest on the inside. I repeated that step for all the faux fur of garment.
Right sides together, I sewed the bottom back and the bottom front together, but not all the way down because there has to be a split halfway down. I could have sewed the ties while putting the garment together, but I didn't. This is when I sewed them on. It's not like anybody's going to see them. Using the side seam, I used it to line up the bottom seam of the sleeve and pinned it together. Then sewed. There is something missing from the sleeve, but then again, I will have to get it once the stores open up again. That will be in the next video. Right sides together, I lined up the back and side seams and pinned them. I sewed the top and bottom together. Once sewn, I hemmed the top part to clean up the raw edge. The front bottom flap I did separately and in a similar way as the appliques on the front of the tunic and the trims on the sleeve. And the outer garment is done. Next video, I'll have the inner shirt as well as some minor tweaks on the outer garment.